In this video, I would like to talk to you about preparedness. Hi, I'm Bravo Echo from Hope for Survival YouTube. If you're not a member of Hope for Survival YouTube, please consider subscribing. And if you like this video, please consider hitting the like button. <clears throat> Help us grow our channel. In the preparedness video upcoming, I would like to talk to you about what is preparedness, different levels, rule of law, without rule of law, the stoplight chart, layers of security, and a few other items. So let's start off by talking about preparedness and types of disasters. You have natural, man-made, technological disasters. And the forms of disasters, natural, flood, tornado, ice storm, hurricane, fire, derecho, CME, uh, EMP, and others. Man-made could be terrorism, bioterrorism, agroterrorism, narco-terrorism, could be economic terrorism, or an active shooter at different levels could be ruled an act of terrorism. Technological um, electronic, cyber, and EMP. When we have a disaster, disaster response comes at different levels. At the government and state response, remember, critical infrastructure is the priority at every level, always. Incidents are always managed at the local level. Priorities during a disaster will be continuity of government, roads, hospitals, utilities, communications. It is trying to restabilize a functioning community or region as quickly as possible. Where does that leave you, private citizen? FEMA supports regions and direct requests from state leadership. Oftentimes, FEMA, uh, in, to some degree, gets a bad rap because People point their finger that FEMA failed to deliver X resources. Resources from FEMA are brought in at the request of the state governor, and they respond with requested items from the state leadership. Preparedness means self-reliance to take care of you. What is your plan? And that is why we talk preparedness. How are you preparing to have a self-reliant package to take care of yourself and your family and your community. Why preparedness and not prepping? Preparedness, it's a state of readiness 24 seven for self, spiritual, physical, and psychological well-being and family, food, water, shelter, and shelter and protection. A state of actions that are taken as precautionary measures in the face of potential disaster. Forecasting and taking steps prior to a possible event before it happens. This is preparing. Preparedness is used as an insurance policy. We have all types, health, life, car, home, flood, tornado, short and long-term disability, pet insurance. So I ask, why do people focus on the most important need, the least amount? Because we are a society that has been raised um, and most are dependent upon a system and the question can be asked is that system failing prepping on the other hand this action or process of preparing for something a, a single event or a single action so you can kind of think of prepping as a colonoscopy you take the liquid to prepare you for going in for a single event so preparedness is 24 7 preparing in advance for the unknown and prepping most people you will hear talking about their prepping for SHTF event. But what happens if you're only preparing or prepping for the SHTF event in between today and when that event happens, you have all different kinds of disasters and events occurring in your life. Spiritual, psychological, and physical. Knowing yourself is the most uh, uh, important part of preparedness. Where do you stand right now? How well do you know you? 
If you had to depend on yourself to protect or save your life or the life of a family member, how would you handle it? What if it's a car wreck, a shooting accident, a home invasion, jogging or hiking accident while alone, physical attack on your family? How would you react? Would you suffer from brain freeze? Are you physically able? Blessed is each man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. Jeremiah 17, 7. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. 1 Timothy 5, 8. So some basics to preparedness, food, water, shelter, and security. And their food, the federal government and FEMA, <clears throat> variates uh, from three days to seven days to 10 days to 14 days to six months. Self-reliance is the goal. Prepare day to day to avoid the rush during the disaster. Do you want to be part of the 10% who are prepared or the 90% who are unprepared? We have short, medium, and long-term foods, canned, gardening, hunting, freeze-dried, and dehydrated. Water, you want clean, potable water, well, um, water, catch system, river, creek, or stream. The ability to sanitize water, purification tablets of Berkey, uh, bleach, and boil. Two to three gallons per day per person, eight pounds per gallon, roughly 1,050 gallons per year. Shelter can be a house, tent, car, shelter. The goal is to avoid the elements in your region. Security, self-protection, and family protection from all threats. So when we talk about security, a simple way to approach it are the five Ds. Okay. Um, we talked about this in previous Hope for Survival platforms and in my book, um, One, Hope for Survival. So you got deter, detect, deny, delay, and defend. If you can remember these five D, the five Ds, when you're building your security plan for your home or for your community, remember these five steps, the five Ds, it should help you in what you're trying to achieve. So with security, one of the things that I personally look at is I set up my um, local and national global event matrix. So I basically draw circles and I put in what are some global events, five of them, national level events, and then my five mile range from my home. And then from that, I put it into my personal threat matrix, my top five. So I have my global level, my national level, and then my local level or my five mile radius. And I list out <clears throat> based on current events of the day or the month, what would be the most likely five events that could impact and change my way of life. With these things in mind, in my daily status, I try to stay left of bang. That means being proactive versus to the right, being reactive, meaning responding after the event has occurred. So it's all in a mindset and how we see the world around us. So the full left of bang to consider, what areas of your life should you address to get you left of bang? Your community, food, water, shelter, security, routes, medicinal, to name a few. Your faith of as equal importance, your psychological well-being, understanding yourself and limits. I talk about this in Hope for Survival Book 2, The Mindset. Your physical well-being. The one is none, two is one, three is better concept is critical uh, in these next months ahead. Don't focus on the unknowns, rather focus on you and your preparedness. Don't worry about what you can't change. Be knowledgeable of them and know what's going on. <clears throat> they are the causes, but ask the question, how does it affect you? If it doesn't affect you directly and it's not going to change your daily way of life, remember those things but focus strictly on what has a cause and how it affects you. Rule of law and without rule of law and use of force policy. I often hear conversations of individuals talking about 
I would do this and I would do that. But you never hear him talking about are they under a rule of law or without rule of law um, status. So what is rule of law? It's when law enforcement and justice systems are available to enforce existing laws. It's when you call 911 and you get an answer and a response. Without rule of law or WROL, all available law enforcement courts and justice systems no longer respond or are available to support and defend existing laws. At this point, if you're in a WROL, you're basically living in a rogue society. Knowing the importance of and establishing your family or community use of force policy or force continuum for everyone to follow is critical. When an event surfaces, where the use of force is required and it appears you know the threat, would this change your use of force policy in any way? Family and community leaders must understand and know when to switch from ROL to WROL and what the change implies and requires. Some examples of without rule of law uh, likely causes for it would be a civil war uh, versus insurgency national level conflicts, regional city conflicts, and citizens against Senate citizens. And you can see on the uh, headers, some examples um, without going into them detail by detail. This again, stresses the importance of knowing your five mile radius in your community, <clears throat> how it functions, who's leading it, and the people who are around you. So let's talk about the personal alerting system, often referred to as the red light chart. So under green or go, continue planning and preparing food, water, meds, resources. Continue working on family and neighbors with your team, your tribe, your node. Um, do your best to know who may be a 90 percenter. Continue building your security plan for yourself, your neighborhood and routes by adjusting according to events in your area. A lot of this goes um, under the caveat of building your plans and proper planning and making them evergreen, adjusting them as circumstances dictate. Evaluate your abilities to use your preparedness resources. I know folks many folks who have closets and garages full of boxes uh, with lots of preparedness items and they've never been out of the box. Continue assessing your multiple routes used daily, adjust according to status, changes, construction, local threats, vehicle type you drive. Do you cross state lines in your daily routines? Know the applicable laws. Continue monitoring global and national events, but pay attention to your five mile radius daily. Who do you communicate with in the know locally? Continue working on and adjusting your personal, physical, spiritual, psychological well being. Are you capable of leading your family and your community? These are just a few of many things you must continue doing daily. Life, um, live life with no fear. Monitor your stress and health. Do not allow daily events to get you down. Remember, stay left of bang and out of the box in all you do. Pray often and don't forget to give thanks. Be confident and a leader. Personal alerting system alert, gold. Pay closer attention to your surroundings and local events. Try to separate yourself from the 90% group when possible. Don't get caught in local or highway traffic stops. No multiple routes to and from destinations. Double check your day bag and bug out bag to ensure it is resourced and adjust to the winter season and threat changes in your area. Double check your plans and resources to ensure you are stocked, restocked as needed. Pay closer attention to local food and fuel availability based on conditions. Restock your medications if possible. Test your communication equipment and exercise your PACE plan one last time before possible engagement of the plan. Be ready to go to red and implement your plans accordingly. Stay left of bang and out of the box and all that you do. And pray often and don't forget to give thanks.
stay alert and start leading. We are on the red now. Stop. This is where you should always separate yourself from the 90% group. When they're going left to go get resources, you should already have them and you should be going in the opposite direction to avoid the 90% group. When the un unprepared heads to the stores, you should be heading to grab some additional cash, fuel, and any non-food supplies if needed. Your goal is to avoid the 90% craziness at all costs. Avoid populated areas such as traffic, shopping malls, and grocery stores. Implement your family communication plan. Engage your PACE system with family and team. If you don't have a communication schedule, set one up according to your PACE plan. Ensure everyone knows the group trigger word or phrase. Be prepared and know when to lock down. It should be predetermined. At this point, all personnel should know the plan and engage same. Location should determine specifics as threat could be specific regions. Consider implementing your security plan for your, neighbor, for your family and your neighborhood. Staying out of the box and left to bang is essential 24 seven. Pray often and don't forget to give thanks. Lead, protect, and prevail. So the five mile radius that I've been mentioning, it's a theory and a concept. <clears throat> the theory of the five, five mile radius may be building security in depth to 500 yards, 5,000 yards, one building, one block, a neighborhood street, or the entire neighborhood a mile or five miles. It could be your farm, multiple farms, a mile or five miles. Gathering and collecting information is a process. It is not black and white and it must be analyzed and determine what risk you face from the threat. Information may be fresh, old, third word, first person, historical, or immediate. How you process it and then apply it is likely the determining factor to keep your community a hard target. Your job is to push the threat as far from you as possible. You may still have threats close by though. Identify them now to gain the upper hand when, when things tank. Know who is a patriot, who is armed, who has food, who can you trust, who would you want to be on your team and near your family. When threats are near, liberal and or conservatives will team together to save their families. Every home and family on your team pushes your radius outward. You can invest now or you can pay later. So where does this leave you? Anyone previously living through a prolonged disaster understands the experiences of reaction, response, and recovery. Self and family, self-reliance, prepare, prepare now like never before. The family, team, tribe, node, it's a community survival and self-reliance. Five mile radius, home and community, self-reliance. Oh, your community, chamber of commerce, town council, your voice, it counts. The group, identify potential of skilled people and vet same. Dependability and reliability, being nice doesn't always pass the test. Identify skill sets, starting status and needs of your group members. Dependability, reliability, accountability. Who is doing what? Results. Identify objectives to achieve before meetings. Cover tasks and work through issues. Identify new tasks and objectives to work between meetings. All group members are rowers of the boat equally, but one must give commands. Who is tracking and documenting group status? Lead by example, team building, communicate, listen, and show respect. Note, if one is none and two is one and three is better, who replaces the leader? Are all plans documented, um, document lessons learned, and document for the next leader in line? Things we should be doing. During this period of the unknown, things we should be doing. Building up on our faith, building a personal relationship with God through prayer, bonding and improving relationships with family in our home, building or dusting off your plans and sharing with family to ensure they are understood. Join or start a Hope for Survival group to be with like-minded preparers for information and support. 
Be a part of the solution with effort and energy. Know your five mile radius. What is going on? Continue building your preparedness levels. Monitor your savings retirement accounts and adjust accordingly. Locate and participate in your local town council meetings. Let your voice and concerns be heard respectfully. Increase your numbers of like-minded voices to be heard louder. Know your local sheriff and where he or she stands on, law, on laws and enforcement of the law. Monitor what is taking place in Washington, D.C. Write to your elected official with concerns. Visit your elected officials when they're on recess in your home area. Listen and monitor what elect officials are doing, not just what they're saying. So when you look at the left of bang chart today, where do you currently rate? Are you left of bang being proactive to things you're seeing or do you naturally cross the bang and then um, act in a reactive manner? So in conclusion, with the number of increased disasters occurring around us, now is the time to build your emergency plans, emergency food, water, family communication plans. Remember, 90% of preparedness is awareness. A federal government study says 90% of U.S. citizens will die during any type of pandemic or electromagnetic pulse event. Address your spiritual, psychological, and physical well-being. Prepare yourself, your family, and your community today. The hardest part of preparing is adjusting your mindset. Be blessed, thankful, and always have hope because we are blessed people. <clears throat> Do you trust putting your family's future in the hands of strangers? So with all this information, take a step back, ponder, go through what you've achieved and ask yourself some of these serious questions. Only you will know and only you can adjust your mindset <clears throat> to build your self-reliant policy to protect your family and your community. It's all on you. If Hope for Survival can be of any help or support to you, you can visit our website at hopeforsurvival.com. There's over 550 um, posts on the website um, covering numerous uh, topics in preparedness. Or you can email me at preparedness101 at protonmail.com. Or you can search through the YouTube channel and you can find numerous videos on here that may help you. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Get prepared. I hope the information in this video um, has helped you in some way. Again, if you have not subscribed, please consider doing so. If you like this information, hit like. Stay safe. Be blessed. And until next time, Bravo Echo out.